when we look out into space from our place here on Earth, it looks like the sun has moved on, gone on to a new hexagram, this hexagram number 14. And remember, this hexagram is one of 64 portions of the sky around us that we use in human design. So portions of the star fields. And the star field behind the sun is issuing neutrinos pouring in every direction, but the ones coming towards us come through the sun and then come through us. So the sun sign or where the sun sits in the human design wheel is very significant for us. And so this particular hexagram that we're going to look at is the gateway we call prosperity, gateway number 14. So here are the pages for it. And if you look where the wheel is, and then just down below the wheel and to the right, you'll see columns where there are the astrological signs related to each one of the six lines in the hexagram. And all the lines up until number six are in Scorpio in the astrological wheel. And if you look right at the bottom line, the sixth line there, as it concludes, the sun will have gone over into Sagittarius. And so just to remark on that, to see that there's quite a shift goes on in this particular hexagram energetically. Uh, so let's have a look, see, these are the pages and let's have a look at the wheel here. We're up in the top right hand corner here. You'll see the gateway number 14 there. And we're seeing it right at the end of the blue marking of uh, Scorpio and just at the beginning of the orange marking there for Sagittarius. We go almost directly opposite and we get to gateway number two the gateway of receptivity, and this is the most yin, most feminine, most receptive of all the hexagrams in the human design, in the wheel, in the I Ching. And so a little bit off center, they're not 180 degrees apart, but they make up this channel, the 214, which is the channel that we call, we call it the channel of the alchemist. And the alchemist basically is somebody who has the means to transform something of a very mediocre means into something quite different, changing base metal into gold. So it's a very, very particular channel, this one, engaging very much with our sense of prosperity, wealth, and that whole realm of creating something we might describe even as being miraculous. People with this channel, they're very often very competent around money and wealth and creating wealth. Um, but let's have a look at gateway number 14. That's the gateway we're looking at particularly here. The gate is called prosperity. Uh, in the traditional Chinese translation, it's called possession in great measure. I see it as a gateway of harvesting. Like you put out an effort, you put out some kind of uh, implementation in the world and you draw the results from it. But it's very, very specific how this all takes place. And it says, there is a knack in learning to embody genuine ease in situations involving resources of property, wealth, and affluence. Right, so I would guess all of us on some level or another, we have a money trip. <laughs> you know, it's a big puzzle for all of us here in the material world. We are spirited beings playing in this money sphere, in this material world. And... Uh, Prosperity, this 14th gateway, is very much that kind of draws our attention to what we're doing in our wealth scenario. You know, are we, are we allowed to be wealthy? Or are we just living in a state of poverty consciousness that we can only go so far that we're not deserving? And there's been all kinds of descriptions put around this for us. You know, money doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> Money is the root of all evil. And a lot of people, whether they have the wealth or not, whether they engage in this prosperity or not, there's a lot of very miserable millionaires in this world and billionaires too, for that matter. And there's a lot of very happy people who somehow engage on a level of prosperity, we would have to say in much lesser terms of wealth and well-being. So ultimately, what we're going to say about this 14th gateway it is very much an internal attitude that describes how we draw the benefit of what we put out into the world, how we engage in this prosperity. The particular commentary on this, the clarity of personal commitment, inner strength, 
detachment and perseverance ensures enormous transformation and empowerment. It's quite a mouthful, that whole sentence, but it basically says it's, it's a personal thing. Wealth and prosperity is very much a personal thing. You can feel wealthy and prosperous with a dollar in your pocket or a million dollars in your pocket. It's just an internal thing. And as I say, there are plenty of miserable millionaires on this planet who never seem to have engaged with recognizing when enough is enough or enough is sufficient. So definitely worth looking at our attitude around wealth in terms of this 14th gateway of prosperity. If we look at the lines here, going through the lines, the first line tells a lot about any hexagram. And the, it basically shines a light here on our attitude towards wealth. There's a very famous saying, you know, do what you love and the money will follow. And in a sense, it engages quite well with this 14 with the first line here in that whatever you do, do you have enough presence and commitment and engagement with it that you would do it for nothing? Do you have a joy or a love in what it is that you do? Do you derive that inner satisfaction? Now, again, we're back in the individual circuitry. An individual circuitry is all about transformation in life. So there's a great transformation possible for us in our attitude to money to just see that being detached from what it is that we do is, or let's just say being detached from the rewards that we derive from what we do is key to accessing this prosperity. Yes, the money needs to come. Yes, one prices oneself accordingly in the work that one does, one receives but it's just seeing that it's the transformation that takes place through engaging in a wholesome way with our attitude towards prosperity. So the first line is called satisfaction. Examining closely what it is that really motivates you. Is it the money or is it the joy of what it is that you do? And I'm not saying work for nothing. I'm not saying work for free. But the 14 with the first line gives an indication. Would you do it for nothing? Do you love it so much that you would do it for free? And if you can find that space inside yourself, then seeing, okay, I would do it for free. I love it. I'm engaged in it so much. And yes, this is what I charge for what it is that I do. This is the salary I expect to get from what I do because I can give myself totally to what it is that I'm doing here. This is a gateway in the top side of the sacral center in the, in the human design chart. It's a generator gateway. The 214 channel is a tantric channel, taking base metal from gold for the real alchemy, but also raising things from a lower frequency to a higher frequency. So 14 is very, very significant in this regard. And when the sun goes in here, we all have this five, six days of really examining what is our attitude towards wealth and prosperity? Am I in the right job? Have I been railroaded into something into other people's concepts of what wealth and prosperity is all about. So here it is, when the sun goes into the 14, we have the opportunity to really look closely at what it is that motivates us. Are we here to be a slave to work? You know, is our whole life about the job description that we have? Or is it about us really engaging as a free spirit, as a sovereign being in our life and being as creative and prosperous as possible. So here the line says, a dependence on anything outside you to make you happy will be found to be misplaced. Yes, all kinds of things can spark happiness in us. But the same thing, things can spark the opposite, unhappiness in us as well, the same things. And it's just the realization here, it's an inside job. It's totally an inside job, whether we're happy or not. You can't make somebody else happy, right? It may look like for a little while they're going to be happy for seeing you or the things that you do or whatever like that, but it's an engagement. It's an inner attitude they have to hold for themselves. And it's exactly the same thing around prosperity. It's that inner attitude. Can we find that? 
Can we find the fun, the joy, the engagement, the fulfillment, and the transformation in what it is that we do and in that sense of prosperity in the world? And let's just face it, whether you've ever realized this or not, we live in an abundant universe. There's more than enough for everyone. And yet somehow this word economy has been drawn in, shortages, shortfalls, all these things have been drawn in. And so the 14th gateway has this possibility to kind of penetrate, to transform that whole attitude and go into a very, very different space. So let's have a look. Jupiter gives it a very particular flavor. You have a principled approach to attaining and utilizing material resources, a principled approach. Jupiter is very much the planet of expansion. The first line just sees as unlimited expansion possible if one has the right attitude. I love what I do. I engage fully with it. I'm totally into it. I'm responding well to it. The other side of it with Mercury attempting to control the flow of resources in life requires you to have great trust. So overly counting the beans or counting, you know, the pros and cons about things, putting a kind of mental block on the whole concept of prosperity. Am I getting anywhere? Am I allowed to be creative? Am I allowed to put forward what I love to do in life? The second line. Second line has this very natural approach to life, and as long as it stays natural and open, all kinds of great things happen for the second line. But the moment it starts defending itself or getting in denial, and this this particular line is just saying, you know, it's not a bad thing taking on assistance from other people. The second line has this very natural way of going about things. So let's look at this line, engaging wholesomeness the growing wisdom and capability to manage your assets elegantly. There's something to be said about elegance in life and to have fun with that, to be playful in the whole arena of prosperity. And second line to have this thing of just happening on things sometimes. And it's just saying, you know, don't take it for granted necessarily, but do see what can take place through that. You maximize your resources through obtaining good assistance or by going it alone. Nothing wrong with taking on a financial consultant or somebody to oversee what it is that's going on in the whole realm of prosperity in your life. And here Jupiter gives it a flavor. Your key to expanding wealth lies in receiving assistance or by going it alone. Sorry, your key to expanding wealth lies in receiving assistance from willing and capable helpers, right? Just recognizing who's in this, who gets what I'm up to, who can help me expand Jupiter energy, who can expand my whole arena of prosperity here. And the Mars energy, the tendency to want to go it alone, if you only trust your incapability to carry everything, you'll soon become overloaded. And so it is, you know, engaging too much with what one does, taking it all on. I can manage, I don't need your input, I don't need your help. And then sure enough, there's the overload that takes place. We get the third line, and the third line is called sacrificing, offering your talents and resources for the good of all. So third lines always have this commitment issue. Do I engage in this or not? Is it okay to be prosperous or not? What do I have to do to be prosperous? What is prosperity? And so I'm saying, you know, prosperity is very much an inside job. And here, this line is saying, offering your talents and resources for the good of all. So necessarily, everybody can engage in what it is that you happen upon. Now, third lines are very often the first ones to engage in a project or to get into something and to see the potentials of it. And so it's just, here is the offering of seeing you know, maybe I can really put out my efforts so everybody derives benefit from it. The earth gives it a flavor with the grounding energy of the earth. Gifting others selflessly brings you the greatest possible personal satisfaction. Giving and receiving, it's, finding that balance in life is absolutely amazing. And our tendency is to want to give but also want to receive. And the third line here is just seeing, you know, generally speaking, 
I'm not quite clear where this all goes, where my energies go in terms of giving and receiving. And this line is saying, look, the third line is called sacrificing. It's, it works well for you to be able to offer, to give of your resources. And you'll find from that great personal satisfaction. Neptune gives it another flavor, the delusion that holding on to extra personal resources will bring you satisfaction. And here it is, the balance between giving and receiving. And it's like here the tendency is to receive and to take and to accumulate. And in the end, there is no satisfaction then. You can't take it all with you, but in the meantime, you start distancing people from you. Anyone that's ever been in a situation of hoarding, just taking everything for themselves, and sooner or later they find, wow, there's absolutely nobody I can relate to here. I don't have any friends. I don't have any people that are in my level of trust. We get to the fourth line. Fourth line is always a bit of an echo of the first line here. And this line is calling itself being secure. Now, fourth, fourth lines always have that potential to be influential, but they find when their influential nature is challenged, they can shut down. They can totally disappear. Very fragile if people are not appreciating what it is they're doing. And so the bottom line for the fourth line here is to feel secure. Now, how do you feel secure in the material world? And it says personal security exists in having what you need. So ground rules for the fourth line is you've got to have what you need. And what I say to people when I see they have this fourth line, look, look around you in your life and look at those things that make you feel secure in your life. Maybe it's the cat, maybe it's a picture, maybe it's a carpet, maybe it's money in the bank. Who knows? But recognize it for yourself, what it is that relates to you when you look at it or you sense it makes you feel secure. Have that in your life, regardless. If you had to run out of your life all of a sudden, had to run for your life, what would you take with you? You know, what is that thing that makes you feel, regardless of whatever else happens in your life, what is it that you need to have? that makes you feel secure in terms of prosperity. You ensure your empowerment by knowing what makes you secure and having it in your life. There's a real key in that. As I say, you can't take it all with you, but there are some things that are really great companions for you to have during your lifetime. The moon gives it a flavor, honing skills to ensure your personal sensation of security through any changes that life brings. And let's face it, life brings changes. And there's just, just that thing, as the seasons change, what do you carry with you? What maintains its presence with you? What do you recognize has, gives you that sense of security and prosperity? The Mars side of it, exercising caution, allows you to develop the personal skills you need to thrive in life. Caution and Mars, they're not necessarily two words that go together. You know, Mars is always hot to trot and wanting to get on with things. And it's just saying here, Mars can develop the personal skills to harness prosperity and resources and be able to thrive in life. But it has to calm down sometimes, it has to cool it. What is it that's essential here? That's what this line is saying. We get to the fifth line, and the fifth line always has this leadership quality in terms of being able to see what prosperity is all about, how it can be manifested, how it can be brought about, how it can be utilized in life. And so as a leader and a teacher in this regard, fifth lines generally have a good idea of what wealth is all about and prosperity is all about, but the line is called being sincere, appropriate interactions with others concerning material matters. All of us know stories of when an advantage has been taken on a financial level. People have been ripped off. People have been had all their resources stolen. And I'm not saying fifth lines do that, but they have to be really sincere. They can see other people's weaknesses and other people's you know, inability to handle stuff. And there is that thing of being sincere. If they're going to interact with others in material matters, they need to be very straightforward. Your knack for handling the material world requires skills when it relates to those in it. Some are better off than others in terms of understanding what prosperity and wealth is all about. Here with the sun's energy, your dignified ways ensures everyone's appreciation in all material matters, interactions. And just there it is. That's the fifth line in its highest regard is just seeing I can really benefit. 
inform, teach people how to handle their resources, how to engage in a lifestyle that brings them great prosperity. The Venus side of it being overly friendly in material matters will inevitably lead you to misunderstandings. Nothing like, you know, talking turkey when it comes to money. You've got to be absolutely straightforward. This is the deal. This is what it costs. This is our agreement. This is what we're going to pay. This is what your salary is going to be. These things have to be really, really straightforward. And a great way to lose friends over money. If you're, if you're not straight with them. The sixth line. And remember the sixth line I was saying, this is where there's a shift out of the sign of Scorpio, which is all about transformation, if you will, into Sagittarius, which is all about launching into the future or a future perspective of sense. And so the line has this kind of little bridge in terms of the how the energy moves, and it doesn't necessarily relate completely to all the rest of the lines in the 14th hexagram here. But let's see. It's called being worthy. Existence gives resources and blessing to whomever it chooses. Luck of the draw. You know, sometimes when I see this 14 with the six line in somebody's design, I say, oh, you've got the millionaire's line. And I'd have to say, you know, people I've come across with this 14 with the six line, very often they find themselves in that role. They just somehow attract resources and blessings in prosperous levels to them. And that's not a given thing, but it, it, it just it's that faculty to be able to have that attractive energy. And so I say a spiritual and or material approach to the responsibilities associated with wealth. I'm sure all of us have got stories about wealth and who can handle it and who can't handle it and what people do with it and how people play tricks and games with it. And that's why I say it's a spiritual and or material approach. All of us probably have come across people that have no idea what to do with their prosperity. I've met millionaires with massive prosperity and wealth and lands and owning stuff. And the quality of their life is appalling. Yeah, they've got all this stuff, but they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to enjoy or have fun within it all. They don't know how to be a spirited being in that whole arena. And that's, you know, this is the 14th gateway. It's the challenge. Are you engaged in something you really love to do? That's the bottom line with it. And if you are and you can play it and you can just see, I see myself as worthy to receive. And then, of course, the blessings follow. But all of us have to find that sense of worthiness. Are we still carrying other people's ideas of whether we're allowed to be prosperous or not? And here the sun gives it a flavor. Your easy acceptance of wealth gives you the humility to be generous and grateful. Two key words there, generous and grateful. One of the words for money is, is currency. And currency, you can see there's something of a flow in currency. Going, giving, you know, there's always a flow. Coming in, going out. Coming in, going out. And generosity is part of that thing, having a generous nature. It doesn't mean you say you give the farm away. But it just means to say there's always a flow, give and take. And also that thing of being grateful. You know, life blesses me, and I'm so grateful for that. And as I say, in the end, we're all going to recognize it's an inside job. We may have a very high-flying job and a high-flying career or high-flying work and actually hate what it is that we do. And yes, we get paid for it, but there's no inner satisfaction. And yet we can see our gifts and talents are maybe wanting us to go in a different direction. How do we make that jump? How do we make that distinction? How do we see life is calling me to do something very different? And I say, it all comes back to our type and authority. We know inside ourselves what life is calling us towards. And really, this is not a life to live out in regret. This is a life to live out in fullness, full play. The earth side of this, the kind of grounded approach to it, the practical approach, allows you to find a balance between material and spiritual realms. And there's that thing. It's very possible with the 14 of the six line is just to see, you know, to go beyond any sense of money needs or, you know, just to go much more into the spiritual side of things, go and live in an ashram, go and live in a monastery, take on vows. 
And so, again, the 14th gateway is all that inner sense of prosperity. Can I feel prosperous in my life? What does it take? Do I have to rely on the things that I see around me? Or do I just carry that energy with me? And that's the whole trick with this 14th gateway. And when we play it right, we see life takes us into all kinds of amazing adventures. <laughs>